for those that were waiting for me to repair that set of white Titan speakers by Paradigm. Your wait is over because we're going to do that one in this one coming right up on Tech Talk. In the last episode, I was working on a pair of uh, Paradigm Atom speakers. This time I've got Paradigm Titan. These are the ones we looked at last week that had the bad driver. In fact, both of them got bad drivers. I've already taken this driver out so that I could measure it and get what I hope is the correct foam size for this one because this one's a little different size speaker. But I did get some foams. Let's see if I got the right ones. Are these ones going to be the right foams for this speaker? Uh, looks like, yeah, they probably will fit just fine. Excellent. Excellent. So let's go ahead and do these speakers. I have two of them to do here. And then we'll see how these little speakers sound once I'm done. These ones, incidentally, were $5 a piece. And they look to be the exact foams for these speakers. So we're going to take, like before, we're going to take off the remainder of the old foams. These ones actually come off quite easy because they're just glued down to paper. These ones actually had a, a, paper, a paper gasket on them as well. So these ones might even repair faster than the others. I'm going to do them the same way. I'm going to use my 50 hertz audio generator. When I worked at the shop, we used to do speaker uh, repair all the time. I didn't do it myself though. That was my assistant's job. I taught him how to do it and, and he would do this stuff. And he enjoyed doing speakers. And we used to charge quite a bit. I think we, we were charging probably around a hundred bucks per speaker to do them. It was, you know, so, well, I mean, for some expensive speakers, if they were, if they were speakers that were $200 a set, we were probably charging, you know, upwards of 100 bucks to redo both speakers. We certainly weren't doing it for free, that's for sure. But the foams used to cost us a lot more than I paid for these. propylene which are better than paper speakers you don't have to worry about them tearing quite as easy but you got to be kind of careful when you do this that you don't tear the speaker otherwise you're going to be looking for replacing the cone and that's a little more pricey dried on my brush so we'll just kind of fan the brush out again so that I can reuse it. The kit comes with two brushes but I fully intend to use the same one until I, I can no longer use it anymore. This glue is also good for repairing cracks in the paper cone like for old vintage radio speakers where the paper is actually cracking you can paint over it with this and it will stop the paper from buzzing. It's really good glue. The 
Now this glue can be applied multiple ways. You could even put it in a syringe if you wanted. You can brush it on, roll it on, pour it on. Use a syringe. It's uh, not too uh, critical how you apply it. as long as we get the entire surface the edge covered so that we have come total coverage for when the the foam goes on then we can take the foam make sure you got it the right way up and kind of drop it in place and, and then seat it to the actual speaker Make sure it covers the, the cone. Some of these, some of these ones here, these foams will be, you know, right to the edge. Like this one here is right to the edge of the speaker cone. So we want to make sure that we get it all the way around, so that it will glue down. I never had fun with my Altec Lansings because these were glued onto the back side of the cone, which was always fun. You can imagine getting these, gluing them to the back side. Don't know why they did it that way, but that's the way they were. So I'm going to let this uh, glue set up for a few minutes and then we'll hook it up to the amplifier and get the uh, 50 hertz going. That'll center this and then I can glue it down around the edges.
it's important to keep the uh, amplifier running, the oscillator running, for a few minutes as the glue starts to set up, just to keep the cone centered. So this is what I'm doing, is I'm just making sure that it's glued down all the way around and the glue is starting to get tacky. Then I'll mount it back in the box and we'll do the other speaker. I won't show you the whole process of it because it's exactly the same. I will show you taking it out though because these ones had a bit of a bit of a headache getting the speakers out because of the way they were glued into the boxes. But we'll we'll jump ahead as you've now seen this one done. We'll jump ahead to the second speaker and then we'll take a listen to them. Speaker is seated back in the cabinet. This one was fun because I had to chip away some more of that glue in order to get the speaker to properly seat. I gotta get all the screws back in. Listen to the one speaker, see how it sounds and then go and uh, do the other speaker and then I'll have two sets of nice Paradigm speakers ready to, to hook up to something I really like the binding posts on these ones, they're kind of cheap and then I will have two sets, so let's get started. So remember, I scored these speakers for free. Like the other pair I got for free, and like the BMWs that I still have to work on. I got these all for free. So my total, my total investment to fix the other ones was uh, about, about uh, $5.60. And my investment to fix these ones is going to be 10 bucks. Of course, they piled the stupid glue around this one as well. Makes it a pain in the butt to get out. Not only do I got to remove all the screws, I got to chip away the glue that they put in. They got carried away, I guess. Uh, someone at the factory wanted to make sure that nothing would ever buzz, ever. So they poured the, the hot snot over the speaker itself. I don't think these screws have much meat into the wood. That's why they put the second screw in. They put the second screw in here to, to, to grab the lip just to make sure that the uh, speaker wasn't going to ever work its way loose because they knew the people use these speakers. These were, these were uh, real pounders, these speakers, and people tended to abuse them. So they wanted to make sure that they were never going to uh, have a problem with the speaker itself coming loose. the hardest part, getting the stupid speaker out of the box.
to get all this glue out from the uh, the ridge here so that when I remount the speaker, I'm able to sit it properly. Not much left of this one. Not much left to actually remove. So the process on this one is exactly the same as what on the other. So there's no point in showing you guys how to do it again. I did it on the first set just so you can see it in real time. But uh, these are pretty simple to do. So we're going to skip ahead to the speakers reassembled so we can listen to them and then we'll close this one. Pushing about 100 dB there, if you look at the meter here. That's bloody loud! That's actually the microphone on the camera being overloaded. I have these in it. Well, as you can see, my uh, decibels are bouncing around between 90 and 90, what, 94, 97. It's loud. I've got it cranked up. It's uh, at a pretty good level here. You could uh, probably hear it at the corner. It's pretty loud. I was speaking to the camera while it was running and you can't hear me because uh, it's overpowering my voice. The microphone's a little closer to the speaker than it is to me.
that's the second pair done. Sounding great. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you in the next one. Bye for now.